All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So I am a little under the weather, so please excuse my congestion and the voice change. Let's start a discussion. This discussion is about um, unvaccinated as well. So as uh, some of the unvaccinated folks had asked me to do some uh, research and pull some data together, this is really just that part of the effort. And this one is about the South Africa and persons living with HIV. And this is an important one that I wanted to put it even in the title, because many of the media outlets looked at this study and translated that and removed the word persons with HIV and simply said, South Africa study shows a higher carriage of the virus asymptomatically. And it is about 30% of the people. But this is important to understand that this is actually in HIV patients. And there is, a, there is a possibility that an HIV patient may have less severe symptoms or less symptoms in general if their HIV, depending upon their HIV's uh, status. Plus, as we saw the HIV uh, person's report uh, a few weeks ago from South Africa, where she was infected with um, coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2 virus, then she was hospitalized briefly and then she continued to carry the virus for 206 days or 260 days, meaning HIV patients, because they may not be able to uh, clear the virus as efficiently as others, they may actually have a higher carriage. So using that study to generally say a higher asymptomatic carriage is, I think, um, not an exact match to the study's intent. So I wanted to make sure that we, Cool Beans, we are usually in the know. So I wanted to kind of look at that study together. So with this, let's start. I'm going to share my screen. So this is drbean.com. Here is the study itself. High rate of asymptomatic carriage associated with variant strain Omicron. So in this title, they themselves, the authors also do not use the HIV patients, uh, uh, you know, moniker here. They also call it a strain, which Omicron we know is a variant, although I feel it is reaching the level of a strain. And then this is that study. This is one of the examples. For example, here, Reuters is, say, is saying, South African studies suggest Omicron has higher asymptomatic carriage. Then uh, there is a very interesting further data analysis by this one person. Good analysis. I have these links in the description. And this is what is about the HIV. So with this, let's now look at the illustrations. I actually had done this yesterday and I thought I would present it. But yesterday we were talking about other things. So here I got a chance today to present it. So these are our gifts for humanity, and we are at the humanities coffee shop. So apologies, host is feeling a little under the weather today. So here we have a HIV patient. So the patient with HIV. The study is December, was done in December 2021, last month. The clinical trial was called Ubuntu clinical trial. And what they were trying to figure out was efficiency of Moderna in persons with living with HIV. So because they were the study, Ubuntu was for the people living with HIV and the efficacy of the vaccine in them. So of course, the people who were arriving for vaccination did not have a vaccine before. So they were all unvaccinated or at least assumed to be unvaccinated until they were interviewed and maybe they had the vaccine. So these are actually unvaccinated individuals. The question was, number one, were they previously infected? And number two, at the time of vaccine administration, were they already suffering from the COVID as well? So they are people with HIV. And then they were saying, are they suffering with uh, SARS-CoV-2 as well? If they had the infection or if they were not well, then they were not supposed to get the vaccine. This is why these tests were done, and here is that data. So you can, you can imagine that 
describing that this is a study in the HIV patients is very important because dynamics of the infection and the clarity of the infection, clearing of the infection, and immune system's behaviors are different. So here what they did. What they did was they took nasal swabs as a routine test when somebody came in for the vaccine administration. They wanted to make sure that the people are well when they are going to get this vaccine. So they had 230 individuals from December 2nd to December 17th, 2021. And they found from the nasal swabs, they found that out of these 230 individuals, 31% already were carrying the virus. And how did they know? They did the nasal swab as a routine check on everyone. And they found out that SGTF or S gene target was failing on them, which is at this time a, an indicator of Omicron. So this is the basic study. People came in, they had HIV, they wanted to have the vaccine, they were not vaccinated before, and for the vaccine, they did a test on them to make sure that they are not suffering with SARS-CoV-2 at that time, and they found out 31% of the patients or the people had already gotten Omicron and they were carrying it. So for me, the completion of the study would have been if this was the situation was compared to non-HIV patients as well, or people as well, then one could have said, if it was 30% in others too, then one could say, well, this is a 30% carriage in all. I don't think we can claim it is a 30% carriage in all because HIV is a specific situation. Now, this is also interesting that they found that cycle threshold, and we know about the cycle threshold, right? So you do the nasal swab and you take the pieces of RNA, for example, and then you put that in a machine which in every cycle doubles the RNA. So it amplifies it. So it doubles from let's say one to two, from two to four, four to eight, and so on. Of course, if initially, instead of one, there are 100 RNAs, then the first cycle will produce 200, and the second will produce 400. But if there were one piece of RNA, then the first cycle will produce two, and the second will produce four, and it would take some time to reach a larger number. So cycle threshold is a good uh, measure of initial viral load. If there is more load, then lesser cycles are needed to double and double and double to reach a big enough amount that can be detected. So what they saw was that the cycle threshold were low in these patients. That means for, by threshold not, threshold not being low, but the cycles were low, meaning they would run smaller number of cycles, for example, 25 cycles, and they would be able to amplify enough that they would be able to detect the RNA. That means there was a greater load. Once again, it could be that Omicron, because it is highly transmissible, it is going into the cell, coming out, replicating, going back into the cell, coming out fast. And because of that, there's a larger number. But it could also be because these patients are HIV patients and they do not clear out the infection that efficiently. And they have not mentioned what was the reason. They have not given their HIV status and they have not given their I mean, there is some inkling, but that clarity is not present. Generally, they're saying that the 48% of the patients, HIV patients, had a cycle threshold lesser than 25 cycles. That means the initial titers of the virus, initial levels of the virus were high, which they connect to that it means that virus is more contagious, more infectious, it is replicating faster, it has a greater load. 18% of the HIV individuals had a cycle threshold, the number of cycles needed to amplify to a detectable level was 20. So just 20 amplifications were sufficient to make a larger pile. That means initial pile was bigger. So from this, they said we were easily able to um, 
make detectable virus levels or RNA levels, and that means initial titers were high. Then they said, this also means that these patients, these individuals will be shedding more because they have a higher load. That means when they would be shedding by sneezing, coughing, talking, they would be shedding. And remember, these were asymptomatic. So they would not be sneezing around as somebody with the cold will or with the virus will. I think they're just talking, laughing and occasional sneeze would have shed more as well. So they were asymptomatic and because they had a higher load, they would have been shedding more. And look, I made a flying Omicron. I even gave it a single eye and a couple of wings. Okay, so that was another, another inference they had. Then this was another thing that they found. They looked at zero positive or zero negative. What that means is that they also took their, their serum and looked at antibodies in there. And they looked at those who have had the, uh, the virus or the antibodies in their serum who were zero positive. So zero positive or zero negative. That means previously exposed or not had similar asymptomatic carriage. So it didn't matter if they were previously infected and now had antibodies, they still were carrying the virus at a higher load in their nasal area, still a 31%, I believe 27% on both sides. What does that mean? What that means is that they're saying that even if somebody was previously exposed, and had the antibodies, even then the virus was able to evade them and replicate in the nose. I would have changed that part. So you can take this as some of the feedback for the authors as well. I would have changed that to say, this could be because lesser efficiency of the immune system, not just the reduced efficacy of the antibodies. But anyways, zero positive or zero negative, they both were carrying 27% of the people were carrying the virus. So again, higher asymptomatic carriage. Then what they did was they compared it. So this is an interesting part now. They compared it to pre-Omicron time. So in pre-Omicron time, now they're comparing it to the people with HIV. So they are looking at current Omicron and HIV or Omicron levels in HIV patients which are presenting with Omicron asymptomatically. They are comparing this group now to pre-Omicron level, beta level and delta levels or delta or beta virus times and their levels. So this is interesting part. This is a fair analysis. So what they are doing here is they are saying in the beta era when there was beta coronavirus, oh, sorry, not beta coronavirus, when there was beta version, that was the first South African variant. They were at that time running some tests as well. So there was an other study. That study had 1200 persons living with HIV. So once again, HIV is the baseline in here. And in them, the carriage was lesser than 1 to 2.4%. So that is the interesting part. In the beta variant or the beta variant in the HIV patients would have carriage of 1 to 2.4% of the HIV patients would carry beta variant. Compare that to Omicron variant where 30% of HIV patients have Omicron variant. This is an interesting comparison. Now we are talking because we are comparing it to something. We are still not comparing it to non-HIV patients. So I still don't buy the idea that everyone will have 30% asymptomatic carriage. But at least within HIV groups, when they compare various variant dynamics, that is interesting. 
So Omicron definitely shows a higher capability of being transmissible and more infectious. We knew that, but here is a study. So that's interesting. Then they did one more, and this is the last part of the discussion. They also compared it to another study that was called Sisonke trial. In the Sisonke trial, they were actually doing a trial for J&J. In this trial, they had individuals from beta time and from delta time. And these individuals, so this study, these individuals then came back in December. And they were, that was the Omicron time. And they were able to test them once more. So now they were able to get their data from beta era, time of beta, uh, uh, beta variant, then delta variant, and then Omicron variant. This, this progression will be interesting. That still is not mappable to non-HIV, but within HIV, that is an interesting data point. So here is what they saw. So we already know beta is 1 to 2.4% of the people carried it. Delta. 2.6% of the people with HIV carried it. Not a very high number. Now, the same individuals, when they came back in December and were tested again, they showed 16% carriage. 16% of them were carrying Omicron. So this is not 27%, this is not 31%, 16%. And uh, positive vibes only says, PLWH, persons living with HIV. So as I've been saying it again and again, um, HIV, this study is in HIV, although it is being discussed as a study that shows that 30% of the people carry Omicron asymptomatically. I think it is not an exactly accurate statement because this study, every cohort in here is HIV patients. And Sure, HIV can be controlled and managed enough that a person can live and their immune system can behave almost like normally. And there we can have it compared to a normal, healthy individual uh, or a normal immune system. But still, all of the individuals here are HIV and their statuses could be different. So this is the study. What is the conclusion of this study? I wanted to discuss this for two reasons. Number one, this proves that Omicron is more contagious. Omicron can be more infectious. It can replicate faster. It can create a higher load. And I would suggest in all, HIV, not HIV, in everyone. We saw today's study from California, which also showed that Omicron actually can be present in many people although severity is less. Second part that is interesting here is that the same individual with HIV, when exposed, or same individuals with HIV, when exposed to beta variant, then 1 to 2.4% of them had the beta in them. They were carrying it asymptomatically. When they were exposed to delta time, then 2.6% were carrying Delta. But when they were exposed to Omicron, 16% were carrying Omicron. So Omicron tends to live more. I actually feel, so I'm going to stop here. This is the discussion. I actually feel that to some extent, as the Omicron is moving the world towards more human friendly coronavirus, it might actually take us towards a human coronavirus, which will be living in majority of our. Uh, upper respiratory tract as other human coronaviruses do. And I pray that it becomes less of a problem. It doesn't kill more people and, and just becomes a common cold and goes away. So I hope that that uh, part, the missing piece in this one, when you come across these news now, you can actually connect and understand that, hey, this is actually for HIV patients. So that is a discussion. Um, Let's see, there are a couple of questions. Let's answer them, and then I would stop this one. Uh, Colombian says, so maybe more infected were asymptomatic with earlier variants possible. <laughs> 
diversity love is here but i made it up that's my cough cough <laughs> at least i'm honest when i make up stuff okay good uh okay so i have a question for you all i did an analysis today of omicron in california study small number 53000 cases and out of them hospitalized about 222 i think and then one death and i did some analysis with flu flu numbers are bigger omicron numbers were small but i created their percentages and i had a very interesting outcome would you like to see that outcome it is going to make some folks a little upset but would you like to see it so that is my question if you say yes i would come back up and couple of slides i have that i would share let's see so skyfrog says so perhaps a treatment for hiv reduce symptoms i think hiv itself can do it it can also be possible that omicron can just asymptomatically can live in let's say 30% of the people the question is could we see that in non hiv as well as a control group as a cohort as well to compare with here the whole study is about hiv but when it is being presented in media it is presented as high carriage you can actually google it high carriage and you would come across so many outlets saying high omicron has a high carriage rate and so i wanted to make sure that we understand yes david right so persons living with hiv yes uh reema says you sound nasal you are sleeping i am actually uh under the weather i'm congested for 3 4 days reema and uh, uh i had my throat swollen couple of days ago and 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 it was hurting then day before yesterday my lymph nodes got swollen on this side of the uh, neck then in the morning they were okay and now i am congested since yesterday so i'm not progressing or if i'm progressing i'm progressing very slowly so in 4 days i've gone from some sore throat to this sound this congestion so thank you for asking reema i actually wanted to take an off today but i can only do this and feel better i cannot take an off okay and margaret mckinnis thank you very much for your generous donation thank you for your help um thank you very much so siddhartha hope you thank you very much all right so let's do this we're going to close this and then if you are comfortable and if you can keep an open mind to listen to this my thought is that some folks would look at that and say no no it's not a great um comparison and i agree with that but still there is a trend in there and somebody i was discussing that with a friend uh, his name is patrick i won't tell you the last name just for his identity and he sent me bill gates <laughs> article saying that bill gates has said that if omicron when it passes through the community then it would become something like flu so anyways i'll come back in a few minutes and we'll do that talk and paul borg lots of prayers for your brother i hope he becomes completely recovered and goes back home um, cool beans please pray for paul's brother as well he has gone to hospital he had gone to hospital then um was discharged and went back to hospital so prayers and good wishes for you okay cool so i'm going to see you in a few minutes colombian that is how it started Luffy wakes me up at night then I go open the door and I get a gust of wind and folks who are saying that why don't I get the cat door um some folks say don't have it because Luffy is going to bring in cats and snake uh, sorry mouse and snakes so, snakes and stuff so I don't want him to bring in snakes and mice so uh so I did not get the door and then i am the doorman for luffy and that is what you get i guess all right see you soon uh please like subscribe and share and if you would like to support this work there is a link in the description for buying me a coffee another link for paypal 
another link to become a patron. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a second.